Mike Manning, this is a three-peat for you and I talking about some of your yeah. things that are coming out. How are you doing? This is our hat trick. Uh, I'm good. I've been I've been good. It's been a busy 2022 is a busy year, and uh, I have some some pretty cool things coming out this year, and so I can't complain. That's awesome. Very excited to talk to you about this new film that you're in, The Way Out, which is hitting digital uh, on February 10th here. Um, and, you know, we have to dive into some of the the characters that you're taking because it seems like there's a common thread through a lot of them. So we'll get into that a little bit um, based off of some of the other movies that I've talked to you about recently as well. Um, first and foremost, anything new and exciting? Anything new to report since last time? Uh uh yeah um like in life or, or... Yeah, I don't know, in general we, i feel like you and i chat every like three or four months about a new film that you're on maybe a little bit longer yeah uh i guess in the last four four months or so um they killed me on days of our lives again for the <laughs> third time i think so i'm done on on days for now um and then <laughs> what what uh, this is us wrapped up um the holidays happened. I had my family in town in Los Angeles, so that was a full house. That was great. Hung out with my nieces a lot. Um, and then I have, like I said this year, um, I have, you know, The Way Out is coming out. There's there's a rom-com I did. Season 7 of The Bay um, is just posted. Um, I have a film at South By. My friend Leah McKendrick uh, wrote and directed, and she's amazing. And so and she she threw me in there. Um, it's called Scrambled, and it's like a really powerful um, story about women's reproductive rights, and and that's really great. Um, and then The Bellkeeper is coming out. That's the Randy Couture action horror movie. So it's uh, – I know what you're going to say with The Way Out and and the the character of Shane and some of the craziness, but I, I do have to start it off defending myself, saying that there are plenty of projects coming out this year where I do not play – a crazy psychopath and so i just want to start the conversation with that (laughs) absolutely well i I will say mike that even when you do play a crazy psychopath there's always it's a layered crazy psychopath there's always more to the story behind that character which just from talking to you about past roles uh and past projects i'm sure that that's something you look for but we'll, we'll jump into that in a second but let's talk about the way out how did you get attached to this how did you become aware of the project yeah, so the way out, um, I found out about through one of the producers on the project, Nick Thur, who I had worked with on a film called Slap Face um, back in 2019, and he's also a good friend of mine, and um, and he brought me the script and said, Mike, what do you think about this? And the the early drafts of the script, I, I was like, oh, well, you know, I, I wish it would go more into this. I wish it would stay away from this. And, and so I was like, um, I just gave a bunch of notes, and I said, you know, good luck. And to his credit, a couple months later, he and Barry, um, Barry J, the writer director, came back and said, "Okay, we basically made all these changes. We listened to your notes. What do you think?" And I read the script and I was like, "Wow, this is really good." Yeah. And then I think a week or two later, Barry calls me one day and he says, "Mike, um, I want to talk to you about playing Shane." And it, it hadn't even crossed my mind. Uh, and and we start talking about it and I realized how much the character scared me because yes, I've played sort of some of these crazy, you know, characters in the past, but I, I, I don't think, I think Shane is a departure from what I've ever played before. And, um, and it's mo- a more extreme version of, of any of those types of emotions that I've sort of played as characters. And so it scared me. And the fact that it scared me, I said, all right, Barry, let me, let me think about it. Um, I'll, I'll get back to you tomorrow. And so I took, you know, 24 hours, and I called him back and I said, Barry, uh, I'll do it. Let's let's do it. And immediately I signed up for boxing classes. I <laughs> changed my diet. Um, I gained 13 pounds uh, of muscle for this role because I feel like the physical aspect of the character was so important to um, to his presence on screen and, and, and his relationship with the other characters. So I was like, I have to, um, you know, have that phys- physicality down. I have to have that fighting boxing kind of stuff down. Um, and then I just dove into after that sort of the more psychological aspect of, of the abuse and of the trauma and of the anger and, and where that sort of came from um, with Barry. Uh, and I asked him if I could say this, some of the things that happened in the script are based on his own life. Sure. And so I said, okay, Barry, like if we're going to tackle this, I want to do it in a very real authentic way to do justice to some of those other stories that 
have unfortunately happened, you know, in this way with characters like these. Yeah, the thing I really liked about it is that it's, you know, it is suspenseful and there is a certain horror aspect to it, if you will, but there, mm-hmm. it really, it's with a purpose uh, and there there is a deeper message there and a deeper conversation to be had, which I think is always um, very strong for films like this. Shane is an interesting character right from your very first scene. Uh, he's, he's pretty creepy, Mike, right off the bat. You're like, what is with this dude? What's happening? Yeah. Um, and of course my mind was going all different directions with sort of where the story would go. Um, you know, in terms of playing that role, you mentioned that it scared you a little bit. What was it about diving into this that kind of gave you that apprehension? Well, in the film, I think Shane serves two purposes. I feel like in, in one circumstance, he, he shows, he provides that escapism and that sort of aggression and that fun because you know, he, he represents, Shane represents what would happen if somebody just spoke their mind, had no filter and pushed and, and, and pushed to get what they want in every cir- circumstance. He doesn't care if he offends somebody. He doesn't care if he rubs somebody the wrong way. He doesn't care if he doesn't make friends. If Gracie, you know, played by Ashley Murray, if she doesn't like him, if Sherry, um, Sherry Shepard's character doesn't like him. He goes to the AA meeting and he, you know, pushes Alex, um, Johnny's character. He pushes them and he's in front of everybody. So like Shane gives zero F, you know? (laughs) And, um, and so, and, and there's something, uh, sort of fun about that in terms of, you know, why do we go to see movies? We go to see movies to see ourselves in characters and to get escapism. And I think Shane, you know, is embodies that little character in all of us if we just went out and fought for what we wanted and didn't really you know give any f's um but he also provides that fun escapism and that sort of physicality and that like you never know i i I liken shane to almost like like having a wolf in your house Mm -hmm. Uh, on one in on one you know hand it's like it's basically a dog and you can pet him and you can hey buddy and you're you're my companion but he's still a wild animal and he can turn on a dime and you don't really know what's going to happen next. And for me, that's what Shane serves. But I made a deal with Barry and, and, you know, and I said, Barry, if, if I play this character, I will go there and I will be, I will show that aggression and I will show all of that. But I also just as much want to show the, the hurt and the pain and the trauma and the scars to justify to that audience and show them where, all that aggression comes from. I want him to be a three-dimensional character. And I want, by the end of the movie, I at least want the audience to understand why he did what he did and and how that comes from a really, you know, authentic place. Yeah. You know, it's, I think by the end of it and not giving any spoilers away, you, you certainly get that. Um, You get a a, a three-dimensional view of who this guy is and what makes him tick which is what makes him so creepy in the first half of the film when you don't really know what's making him tick. Um, yeah, yeah. What's So I, I mentioned this, the the characters that you're playing in, in the movies that we're talking about, at least. We yeah, started yeah. off, I think, like a year or two ago, maybe talking about The Call, um, and you were playing like a bad boy there in a way. You're playing yeah. the bad boy in slap face who also has a lot more, you know, going on <laughs> behind the eyes there. But this seems like it's it's an escalation even from slap face. Um, Are these roles that you look for? I mean, you explained how you got this role and how it came to be, but is there a certain draw to playing these complicated figures uh, that maybe kind of go against the grain of the typical bad boy character that really pulls you in? Yes. (laughs) I think um, (laughs) it's not my fault, Joe. It's your fault. You just want to talk to me about these weird movies. Listen. No. (laughs) No, I, I think, um, I mean, Slap Face was such a great film and it was such a fun film to be a part of. And so was The Call. And I think, um, I don't know why I keep getting cast as these crazy characters, uh, but it is fun. I, I mean, it's it's fun. As actors, we always want to stretch ourselves and play um, people that are different from us. And I And I like to think that Shane is very different from me. I don't... I don't think that I'm a, a, a crazy psychopath, uh, at least most days. But um, but with this one, I, I really did want to, I, I saw an opportunity in Shane to really take it to that extreme. Um, and, and Johnny, you know, my co-star in this, he, he and I, 
we shot in upstate New York and immediately like the, before filming, we hung out, you know, for a little bit and just tried to build that chemistry and the relationship. And, and the, I remember the first day we went to the gym together and already I'm barking orders at him and I'm like, do it like this, lift it like this and this. And cause the gym is a place where I feel very comfortable. And immediately we started developing that rapport and that sort of relationship. And Johnny was all for it. Johnny was all for staying in character as much as possible to sort of yeah. have that push pull. And, and I think that there are a lot of moments on screen that weren't scripted that are just between Johnny and I. Um, and he also had that with Ashley Murray because he and Ashley were on uh, that CW show Riverdale together. And so they already had like this like friendship. So a lot of their chemistry um, just sort of happened, which was great. Um, but yeah, I think, I mean, like Meryl Streep says this, and so does Ryan Gosling, two actors that I love and respect. <laughs> They both say that that as an actor, all of these characters live inside of you in some form or fashion. There's 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 a there's a piece of all of these characters inside you. And your job is to bring that out and to find ways that you connect with the character and ways that sort of uh, you can you can feel like, you know, you're in your body with them and you're present with them and you understand where they're coming from. And those emotions are coming from a real place. And I think with Shane. Uh, it's exactly that. I tapped into every part of me that ha felt aggression towards the world and felt like I didn't care about what anybody else's feelings. I cared about getting what I wanted using and manipulating any sort of, sort of circumstance. And that's the place I lived in. And there was, there was, I'm, I'll be honest, there was something fun about that on set, you know, just not caring and not saying like, just saying what I want to say and be, and having that physicality and everything like, like there's a and by, and by the end of the movie, um, we premiered at the Burbank Film Festival, which was fantastic. I mean, we won the Audience Award, we won Best LGBT Feature Film there, and you know they were so welcoming. We had a, a huge turnout, and I'm talking to people after the movie, and and everybody's like, "Wow!" Like, I I'm gonna say something that I that might be they 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 thought that they were the only ones saying this. They're like, "I'm gonna say something that might be controversial." I'm like, "What do you what do you think?" And they were like, I, I I, don't know if I'm on Shane's side or Alex's side on this. Like, I don't know if, how, how I feel about it. And that is, to me, that was a win. Because, like I said, you know, you have these crazy characters, but by the end of the movie, you know where that comes from. And when that happens, then people can see themselves in these characters. And and when you help yeah. the, average, the average person see themselves in a crazy psychopath, then I think that you've done your job there was one line and I'm, I'm not going to repeat it because i think it will spoil a little bit of the the story but there's one line that you have with johnny's character uh once johnny realizes what you're up to um mm -hmm. and it's basically comparing what you're doing to what he tried to do if you're if you're catching my drift there uh and yeah it, yeah it was a very interesting line because as soon as i heard it i was like oh wow like that's that's pretty it's deep and it's it, it's a, it's a smack um and it just really made me think about these two characters and to what you were just speaking about with where people are coming down on, you know, not quite understanding or being able to figure out where they, they land. Um, that that's a part of that too. It's a, it's a really interesting line that yeah. I think shapes these characters. Well, I think in this film, I think both of them, the reason they get along is because they had similar things happen to them as, as kids, you know, unfortunately. And so they were both hurt as kids. And somewhere along the way, their their lives, a fork in the road, you know, came in, into their lives. And Johnny went one way and Shane, I'm sorry, Alex went one way and Shane went another way. Johnny and Boochamp and my characters. So both abuse that comes from, a, you know, a place of hurt and pain. Mm -hmm. And there came a time in their lives where Johnny decided to, Alex, is, Alex I'll say Alex, his character, <laughs> Alex decided to hurt himself. Shane decided to hurt the world. Yeah. And and so I think that this is a cautionary tale to uh, the effects of abuse and, and how sometimes when we internalize that and don't talk about that and don't seek treatment and everything else, <clears throat> I think that uh, they they manifest themselves in abuse, like like other abuse, like like drugs and alcohol and everything else. And that's what Alex does. He abuses himself. Shane decides to work out and box and learn how to fight and learn how to defend himself. And Shane decides to go hurt the world. He takes his trauma out on everybody else. And so it's these two similar characters that sort of branch out. And it's a cautionary tale 
to not having that happen. Um, I think also this film <clears throat> is a success story in and of itself with with Barry. So Barry, yeah. Barry J, writer director, um, he is Barry from Barry's Boot Camp. So like he is like the popular gym franchise. And so for Barry, and e even taking a step back from the film in his own life, he went from, you know, working through some of this, th the addiction and everything else, to now he's he's sober and he is, you created this popular gym franchise and now he's well on his way to becoming a very successful writer director so it's like he That's is wild. a success story yeah and it's it's he is a success story showing like look just because you know bad things might happen to you in your life that doesn't have to define you and now that happened to Barry and look where he is in his, in his words Barry found the way out you know and and um and so Barry, you know, his story in this movie is a success story, in my opinion. Yeah, that's that's a really great perspective. And I think your framing of it really um really is a, a good one for what people can expect when they're watching this and where it ends up taking you in terms of the characters. You know, there's one character that we don't really we don't get to see a lot of at the end. We don't really know what happens with her, I'll say. Um, and I'd be interested to maybe offline hear your opinion on kind of where that goes, where that character goes. Um, but you mentioned something about the film festival and how um, it was recognized as an LGBTQ film. Uh, and that's one thing that I really appreciated about this because it's not overtly an LGBTQ film. It is just a film with LGBTQ characters. And I think that mm -hmm. was extremely important to see and always is um uh, is great to see because it's it, it makes it more of a mainstream um, presence, uh, the community a mainstream presence. And I wonder if you can speak to that at all, just with the characters and, um, you know, if that was something that drew you to this this project as well. Yeah, absolutely. It was. I think uh, I always love it, it's, you know, it takes every color to fill a crayon box. And I feel like for far too long in Hollywood, we've only been coloring with certain colors. And I think now um, you know, with the, especially within the last five years, I would say, um, I think different characters have been given their time to shine. And, and that is absolutely something I like about this movie. I think that this movie, if you erased uh, a lot of the details, this movie gives you what you would expect from a David Fincher-esque fight club uh, revenge story. And you're like, okay, cool. I, I sort of scratched that itch and I got what I was expecting. But then if because it's based on Barry and a lot of his true life experiences were able to color the characters in a way that we might not necessarily have if they were completely made up. So we're like, actually, it was kind of like this. Actually, your best friend was kind of like this, like this, like this. And and to your point, it it, it creates a world that's very rich and feels very real uh, without having to fall back on some of those stereotypes uh, that we've seen so much in the past. I love the fact that by the end of this movie, and, and this isn't giving you anything away, I don't think, you don't understand, like, like Shane um, is very fluid, right? Yep. And, and, that, and, that, and that was a fun sort of thing to play because then in the end of the movie, you're like, wait, is he or isn't he? And, and also, is he just using like physicality and attraction to get what he wants? But what's going on under the, and you have all these questions, but that's how human beings are right? Yeah, Human absolutely. beings are not black or white, cut and dry, this or that, fit this mold or this. It's like human beings are, are messy and interesting and weird and all different. And and when I'm able to be a part of projects like that, that sort of right. show that and show the messiness of humanity, um, that is, that's really important to me. And I hope to continue to do that. That's great. There is a scene where uh, Alex returns home and sees Shane with someone else uh, and it just completely threw me off guard at that point. I was like, wait, you think you understand this character at this point, or at least where it's going. But to your point, by the end of this, and just thinking back to it, there's still so many questions about Shane. You you really yeah. don't know everything that's there under the hood. And I think that's really fascinating writing to kind of make it so that it's satisfying once the credits roll. But at the same time, you would love to see more. And I think that's a credit to the writing as well as the acting on that one. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Yeah, this is a silly question. You're put, push it, you're, you're, we should do a sequel. Let's do it. Let's 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 start the sequel trend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, is Slap Face Two happening? You got to work on that one first, right? I know. It's a, it's a. It, uh, I'll tell you offline. 
<laughs> um, you mentioned getting in good shape for this and all that. There is, you know, that really intense, I think, first training session in the garage um, where I'm looking at my notes here when I was writing notes about your character. And I was like, shady character, very dominant, like <laughs> coming across here. Um, mm -hmm. And then there's also a scene, Mike, where you kind of bear all in a shower. Uh, was that the first time you've done that on screen? And is that, you know, how comfortable are you with that type of role? That was the first time that I had done that on screen, having a a full uh, bearing my everything to the world in a shower. Um, and I was I was nervous about that. Of course, I'm, I'm nervous just because, um, you know, it's you're being vulnerable. But I also am really glad that um, that we included that because I feel like Shane is an alpha male through and through. And like you said, a very dominating presence and physicality is, is a huge part of that. And so that was something that I, that I, like I said, as soon as I accepted the role, I was in the gym an hour later and I was like, I need to change my own lifestyle to change my body to be this character because without that change, a lot of these other elements and things won't make sense. I hate when you go and you see a movie and it's supposed to be the bully or it's supposed to be you know, the hero and it's somebody that's like holding their gun upside down <laughs> or whatever. And it's like, this yeah. is not believable, you know, yeah. and, and boxing and training and fighting. And, and, um, and that's why I love that they gave me, they gave Shane a scar, you know, on his, on his cheek, just because it doesn't really answer where it came from, but it, it shows you that he's been through some shit yeah, he's and, seen some and things. things, he's seen some things, things that have happened to him that have made him the way he is. And so with the shower scene, I was like, we have to include um, that. And I love the way Barry shot it without going, giving any spoilers away. For me, I, I think visually it really serves as almost like a cleansing yep. and like a, like almost like a biblical sense of like a washing away the sins. And then, um, and then, you know, he's right back to his shenanigans and, and, you know, you see that. And so it's, I think it was, there was so much about this film that was a collaboration that Barry you know, I had an opinion about or, or Johnny had an opinion about and Barry would listen to us. And, you know, I think a lot of that showed up on screen. So um, and that doesn't always happen. So that was really great in terms of working with Barry. That's excellent. I often ask and I think I've asked you about previous projects, what you hope the audience takes away from it. But I want to flip that a little bit. You know, you you dove into this role of sort of a psychopath in a way, but with a lot of different layers to him uh, and also with Barry's background and experiences influencing the script. What did you walk away from with this, uh, from this project? What, what was, you know, sort of the learning uh, or the lesson learned from this? Yeah. Um, I think my lesson learned from this uh, journey with Barry and with this film and working with Johnny and Ashley and Sherry and everybody else um, I think that humans are very resilient creatures and that we are capable of amazing things and that some of the bad things in our lives don't necessarily define us. Mm -hmm. And you, you don't really truly understand how, how strong a human being is until they're pushed to be that strong and, and you sort of, and they work through that and, and they find that strength within themselves. So yeah. Um, I think that would be my main takeaway. And that's what I hope audiences get from this is, is that, um, you know, we're all much stronger than we than we think. And also, um, there's always a lot going on beneath the surface that you might not necessarily know. So reach out to your friends and reach out to your family and people around you. And if you sense something like that is going on below the surface, um, you know, have try to have those conversations and try to listen to people and and be there for them because that's also just as important. Absolutely. Mike, I can't thank you enough. It's always a pleasure chatting with you about these roles and maybe the next one will be one that's not, you know, suspenseful or horror and uh, a little bit different <laughs> yeah. for us to chat about. Maybe um, we'll see, but no, but I, I, I mean, I love these movies. I love the horror genre. I, you know, I really do. I think horror, especially, you know, I'll leave it with, with this horror, especially, you know, it gives us uh, the genre itself allows filmmakers to sort of, explore the darkest parts of humanity while still keeping everything at an arm's length because it's the horror genre. And I think that, you know, themes of abuse and revenge and everything in this movie, I think they're explored in, in, in such a deep way because it's the horror genre. And I think I love, I love the fact that horror thrillers can do that. So 
Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of joking that you know I, there are other films that I have For coming sure. out, but but I but I but I love these. I love these. I love doing these these types of movies and. Um, and so if I do, you know, a bunch more then that's not going to be necessarily a bad thing. You said that was slap face too, that exact thing about being able to dive into these topics, um, but keep it at a distance with, you know, the horror genre. So I, I definitely yeah. respect that and can see it in the roles that you're taking and these films that are, uh, really diving into some topics that for the, for instance, the way out, I wasn't expecting it to go the direction it did. Um, and I'm thankful yeah, that it yeah. did. So I hope that people enjoy it when it comes out on digital February 10th. And you and I will likely talk soon as it it so happens. So Mike, Sounds thanks good. so much. Thank you, Joe.